the transatlantic slave trade when we came over with the Native Americans. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. The Native Americans, what I'm saying about the Native Americans, today that today they're known as Native Americans, but according to the Bible, they're from the tribe of Gad. That's right. The so-called Puerto Ricans and Mexicans also was in this land. They're native to this land because they're called natives also. They're from the tribe of Issachar. Hey, bro, right here with the tank top. I want you to listen good. Don't leave. Watch this. Read. Bring it out. Now, remember what we just read. We read about we read about the uh, the AIM movement. We read about the Brown Beret movement and the... The, no, not the Black Panthers, but the Civil Rights Movement, right? They all was going through the same thing, right? Brutality, poverty, separation, discrimination. In order for us to fix and come up with the solutions to fix our communities, we must know how we got in the predicament we was in in the first place, right? Now, I want to show you something. You say you're Native American, right? I want to prove to y'all that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the children of Israel. We are the real Jews of the Bible. That's right. That's been hidden for years. We run around and say we black, we niggas, we Negroes, we Native Americans. You get what I'm saying? We Puerto Ricans and Mexicans. But according to the Bible, we're the Israelites. I want to read something to y'all real quick. I'm going to read three articles right quick. This, this is going to tie in to what I'm going to bring out for y'all real quick. Watch this. So you're going to swipe to the left. Let's read these articles right quick. I'll hold this for you. Watch this. The Civil Rights Movement. The Civil Rights Movement was dealing with who? What people? What race? Black people, right? Watch this. Read it again. The Civil Rights Movement was a political movement and campaign from 1954 to 1968 uh -huh. in the United States to abolish institutional race... To abolish institutional what? Racial segregation. Because we were separated, right? Which was good, and our people didn't understand that us being separated from the white man was a good thing. Yeah. Read. Read. Racial segregation, discrimination, and disenfranchisement. Discrimination. They discriminated against our people. There were certain things that they allowed us to do and certain things that they didn't allow us to do. Like certain bathrooms we couldn't go to, certain restaurants we couldn't go to, we couldn't use the fountains. When a white man walked on the streets, we had to step in the damn mud. Y'all understand? They discriminated against our people, even in the job industry. Do they give our people good jobs? Hell no. And if we do get a good job, we got to work three, four times harder than the white man. That's right. Read. This enfranchisement throughout the United States. Throughout the United States. Go to the next one. So we were just talking about what? That black people were discriminated. We was brought into slavery. Y'all understand that, right? We had to fight for the rights that we got today. We had to fight for the right to vote. We had to fight for the right to go into the same restaurants with the other nations. We had to fight for jobs. We had to fight for housing. Bring it out. Read. What were the Brown Berets known for? So now, this is doing the Brown Berets. The Brown Berets, the so-called Hispanics, the so-called Mexicans. What did the Brown Berets fight for? What did they fight for? Watch this. In the barrows of Los Angeles, Chaquino youth found the Brown Berets in 1967. In 1967, around the same time, the so-called blacks started to stand up and fight against the oppression that was done to our people. The Mexicans started to do it. Right. Modeled after the Black Panther Party. Modeled after who? After the Black Panther Party. It was modeled after the Black... What was the Black Panthers doing? They was doing what? Anybody know? It is in the neighborhood. They had little community centers. You know, they had, they had programs for the community, for the black people. For our black people. But what else was they fighting against? What people? <laughs> Say it, man. Nobody gonna do nothing. They were fighting against the white man, against the oppression that they was bringing towards our people. So guess who else started to do it? Because they was oppressed. The Mexicans. Right. The Mexicans started it. So we read about we read about the so-called blacks doing the civil rights movement. We stood up first. Then who followed after us? The so-called Mexicans. They say, hey, if the black people can do it, we can do it. We've been oppressed just like them. This was our land that they took from us. So the so-called Mexicans started to stand up too, and the Puerto Ricans. Read. The organization concentrated on combating police brutality. What? Police brutality. Did y'all know that Mexicans was getting, bruta uh, getting brutality too from the police? Did y'all really know that? They was getting brutalized. 
Y'all knew that? Mexicans was going through the same thing we was going through? I'm going to show y'all how is this, what, what do this correlate with? I'm going to show y'all, read. The organization concentrated on combating police brutality uh -huh. and fighting racism. And fighting what? And fighting racism. A lot of Mexicans think the white man love them. But at this time, the Mexicans knew the white man was the enemy. That's right. The black man at this time knew that the white man was the enemy. That's right. Not today. They love them some white man. Yes, sir, master. Yes, sir, master. But when it comes to our people, if you was to do something against me, I'm just putting it out there, and a white man was to do something to me, who you think our people going to have more mercy on? The white man. That's right. Because we love some white man. But that's the enemy, and I'm going to show you God said that. Read. Give me the next one. The AIM movement. Do you know what the AIM movement is? No. You don't you know what the AIM movement is? Well, we're going to show you. It's dealing with the Native American Indians. Read, read that part again. The American Indian Movement. The American Indian Movement, so-called Native Americans, read. Is a Native American grassroots movement founded in July 1968. Around the same time the so-called blacks stood up to fight. But the blacks started in 1954. They got documented. Come on. In Minneapolis, Minnesota. Initially centered in urban areas. In where? In urban areas. The Native Americans went with the white people? In urban areas to address systematic issues of uh -huh. systematic issues of poverty. Of what? Of poverty. So the Native Americans stood up because they was put in poverty. Remember, this was y'all land first. That's right. How the hell y'all gonna be in poverty in the richest country on earth and it was y'all's first? And then we was brought over here to serve oppression with our brothers because that's documented in the Bible. Right. Come on, read it again. The American Indian Movement is a Native American grassroots movement founded in July 1968 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Initially centered in urban areas to address systematic issues of poverty, uh, poverty, discrimination, discriminate. The Native Americans went through a discrimination also. Come on. And police brutality. And what? And police brutality. So you mean to tell me that the Native Americans went through police brutality just like the so-called blacks and Hispanics did? Yeah. Come on. Against Native Americans. Now, give me Jeremiah. Watch this. Chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50, you know what I want? Yeah. Judah and uh, Ephraim were oppressed together. I'm going to show y'all that we're the Israelites of the Bible and the solutions that we must that we must apply to change our community. Because we, the men first got to be an example. What's your question, bro? The so-called Native American Indians, who's called Native American Indians, which also goes with the so-called Puerto Ricans, the Mexicans, the Native Indians that was in this land first. Right here, who you see that they used to dress like this with the, you know what I'm talking about? Right. Say Native Indians, you mean like Native they was on this land first, right, right, Native but that's what they call them. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, well, I'm just trying to make sure we're on the same. Point. Okay, go ahead. When you say like Native, okay, I'm what you've been taught is what Native American is is one who's supposed to be an Indian. Right, the one who's supposed to be an Indian. Right. Indian. What? But an actual real Indian was like so, so called black people. They was dark skinned people. Yeah, they're not like they was like dark skinned people, people, but I'm gonna show you that. If I got times, right, because you got dark skinned Indians and you got so called like, like he's a Native American Indian. Right, but I'm, right, I'm saying, but the, the point is, what we're taught, we're taught separate than, the, the, like you said, the dark skinned people who are actually you black know, who people, are like us. Right, but they, when they're not taught as being Native American as the Indian is taught as being Native American. Okay, but so, so called that, people was already here, technically, before even the slave trade, that were like darkest colored people here before the exactly, slave trade even happened. Exactly, I'm going to show you that in the Bible. So, exactly, that's what, you're right. So the Native Americans, which was on this land first, is called the tribe of Gad, if you look on this map, or if you look on this right here. So, and the blacks, which is us, the so-called African Americans who was brought here later, we're called Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which would be known as the Haitians, and the Jamaicans, and the so-called African Americans. That's what I'm talking about, the slave trade. The transatlantic slave trade. Exactly. The transatlantic slave trade when we came over with the Native Americans. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. 
the Native Americans, what I'm saying about the Native Americans, today they're, today they're known as Native Americans, but according to the Bible, they're from the tribe of Gad. That's right. The so-called Puerto Ricans and Mexicans also was in this land. They're native to this land, because they're called natives also. They're from the tribe of Issachar. Hey, bro, right here with the tank top. I want you to listen good. Don't leave. Watch this. Read. Bring it out. Now, remember what we just read. We read about, we read about the, uh, the AIM movement. We read about the Brown Beret movement and the... The, no, not the Black Panthers, but the Civil Rights Movement, right? They all was going through the same thing, right? Brutality, poverty, separation, discrimination. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50 and verse 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel. The children of Israel is known as the so-called Hispanics. You look on that chart right there because there was a split between us. The so-called Hispanics and Native Americans came to this land. That's documented in the Bible. That's why they're called Israel. Read it again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel. Which is the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans. And the children of Judah. The children of Judah is the so-called blacks. The so-called Haitians, Jamaicans, and so-called African Americans. Read. Were oppressed together. What did the Lord say? Were oppressed together. God said that the blacks and the Hispanics were oppressed together. Meaning we're gonna be in a, a, a major land and we're gonna be getting the same treatment. Did we not just read that about the Native Americans, about the Mexicans and about the blacks? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. How do we get the name Native American Indian? Indian means slave. Native just means you native to this land. How in the hell is that a nationality? Black is just a color out the crayon box. African American is two white people. It's named after two white people, Amerigo Vespucci and Leo Scipio's Africanus. We don't come from two white men. We're the Israelites, and I'm going to prove that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Let's see what happened. What did we do to get us into to the conditions that we are in today? And what, how, what are we going to do to bring us out of these conditions? There's solutions in the Bible. Let's prove that we're the Israelites. Give me chapter 1, verse 1. First step is to know who you are. Okay, I'm the Israelite. I'm from the tribe of Judah. I'm God's chosen people. And this is why we're in slavery. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Unto who? Unto all Israel. The, who was Moses speaking to? I need to know that y'all paying attention. It said, these be the words which Moses spake unto who? I'm going to read it again. Pay close. Y'all got to pay close attention. Say it again. Israel. Who is he speaking to? Israel. Who is he speaking to? Israel. It says, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. You still got that? I want you to finish reading. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. So when Moses, y'all heard about Moses, right? He brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea into the wilderness out of Egypt. It says, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Why did he say all Israel? Because all 12 tribes that you look at on that sign was together at this time. Before the split happened in the book of Kings. Where we divided and we separated. Y'all understand? So all of us was together. The Lord brought all of us out of Egypt when we was in slavery. Watch this. Let's see what the Lord Moses the Lord told Moses to tell the children of Israel what happened to them in the future. Let's start at verse 1, 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. Now remember, this didn't happen to them exactly. Moses was telling them that this would be a future prophecy. Something that's going to happen to your descendants, your children. Watch this. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Future prophecy. This is going to happen. Read. If thou shalt hearken diligently. thou shalt hearken, meaning if you do listen diligently and to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. So if the Israelites will listen and do God's commandments, this is what will happen to them. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. It says that the Lord will set the Israelites on high above all nations. To be above all nations meaning you're going to be what? 
the top nation, right? You're going to rule over the earth. Some people might read this and say, this is talking about the white man because he's in power right now. That's what this is talking about, being in power. I ain't saying it's talking about the white man. We're going to see who this is talking about. If the Israelites keep God's commandments, they're going to rule over all nations. Read on. To do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations on the earth. And all these blessings. And what? And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So it, he said that if the Israelites will listen to God's commandments, blessings will come upon them and overtake them. When something overtakes you, meaning it, you can't stop it. So if the Israelites was to keep the commandments, they would get blessings no matter what. Let's see the flip side. This is how you prove who the Israelites are. Verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. But it shall come to pass, meaning what? What does it shall come to pass mean? I said it earlier. When I say something shall come to pass, meaning it's going to happen in the what? In, in the what? In the future. It shall come to pass, meaning this is going to happen. Read it again. But it shall come to pass. I'm going through it like this to make sure y'all understand it. We don't want to go too fast. Read it again. Read it slow. But if but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. Hearken means listen. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The voice of God is in this Bible. The words that's written in this book is God's voice. Read. To observe to do all his commandments. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. Hey, don't leave, brother. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he told the Israelites that if they break the commandments, the flip side, what will happen to them? They will get what? The opposite of a blessing is a what? What did he just say? A curse. A curse. Give me Proverbs 8 and 4. Before you leave. Proverbs 8 first. How you doing, bro? My name is Zephaniah, man. I want you to listen to what we're bringing out right now. We're proving that the blacks and the Hispanics and the Native Americans are the children of Israel. And the reason we're in these conditions is because we broke the commandments. Watch this before you leave. The book of Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 4. And to you, O men. What did the Lord say? Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. So God said his voice is to who? The sons of men. God said he's calling the men to come back and stand up for the nation. It takes you to come back and do what the Bible says. You don't got to worry about what everybody else is doing. Because a lot of our people say, what my homie going to think about me? What my guys, guys going to think about To hell with what they think about it. They ain't coming back to keep God's commandments. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models.